We are now at, still at Goolwa, and this is in uh, Edward Booth's car. And uh, I'd like to introduce Edward Booth. G'day, Edward. Hello. And um, this is his Subaru Sherpa. And that's what's looks the, what it looks like in the engine compartment. You'd like to describe a few things for us, Edward? Uh, yes. The, well, the motor is down there. It's simply like a large starter motor, or starter motor on steroids. And um, it's driven by um, batteries at 72 volts. There's one here at the front to keep the nose down, and there are five more in a box in the back. Um, they feed power to a controller, which in turn is controlled by a throttle pop, so there's a, that's connected to the accelerator, that piece there. That um, controls resistance which drives the controller, which in turn drives the high tension wires to the, the uh, traction motor. And, and that's basically all there is to it. All the rest is simply wires and bits and pieces to make it all talk to each other, but um, it's not rocket science. <laughs> and uh, there are a number of requirements from the uh, uh, registrar motor vehicles, one of them being, of course, that you've got to have a demister, if you had a demister previously, so, so that involved a little bit of jiggery-pokery, but uh, I got around it by simply putting a single-bar radiator element in, a, um, in, a, uh, in the heater box and driving off my high-tension circuit, so that's um, quite simple. And there's a set of uh, relays to make sure that you don't burn everything to the ground. Um, there are a lot of fancy switches. There's a, an inertia switch there, which um, if you're in a collision, that shuts down all the electric circuitry. There's a, um, a solenoid here, which when you turn on the ignition key, livens up the, uh, the high-tension circuit. So there's a lot of safety stuff built in, but it's... It's just a, a daisy chain of, of little switches and relays, which are, each one is simple in itself, and if you just start at the beginning and go to the end, you, uh, you, you arrive at an electric car without any great hassles or headaches. And Edward, what did you have to do about your power brakes? Um, well, down here, there is a, a vacuum pump out of a, a Volvo 740. That's a 1987 Volvo 740. Still written on it, I see. Um, and that's... That, was the turbo Volvo, and because they had um, positive, could have positive manifold pressure, they couldn't rely on the manifold vacuum, so they had this little pump to to drive the brakes, and uh, I simply plundered it and drive my brakes with it. So uh, it's quite straightforward. It, it was running all the time, but it sort of made a continuous racket, and I thought, well, that's a waste of effort. So uh, we wired it up to this little micro switch here. So now, when you take your foot off the accelerator, it switches this switch on, and then the brake the brake pump works. But it only works when the your foot's off the accelerator, and you're hardly likely to be accelerating and braking at the same time. Mm. And it will stop perfectly well without them. So um, they're really only a luxury, but the law requires that I have them. Uh, okay, we're about to go for a ride in the Sherpa. Edward's going to drive me. That noise is the reverse gear. Yeah, all you can hear is the gearbox. Well, you get a fair bit of road noise in the car. have enormous torque so that uh, if you put it in first gear and, and flatten it it'll just spin its wheels and big holes in the ground that was taken off in top gear so it has just no problems at all when it comes to uh, to uh, getting itself moving in fact you don't really need the gearbox at all but it's it's kinder to take off in third Yeah, 
just see. Yep. It'll it'll come up in a minute. Yep. The uh, the ammeter is showing the current that I'm drawing, and this is showing the the current that's at the voltage actually across the motor. It's basically a rev counter, so um, it's it's only getting 40 volts. Yeah. Um, at that speed, from the controller. If there's no police but here, there isn't. See what happens. Progressively, this will start to climb towards 72. When it reaches 72, I am flat out. I can't get any more out of it. Yep. But once you're rolling, it uses incredibly little power. That's the thing. You, uh, if you, if you look at it, it's, it's pulling uh, probably something like 50. 50 amps at 72 volts is um, 3.6 kilowatts, which is um, you know, what five horsepower of the old money, and that's all it takes to, to, to roll along at 60 kilometres an hour. She's up there at the moment, right off the scale, but it's very quickly coming. You don't need a clutch, I can use a clutch then. This is a Fiat X9, uh, now called a Fiorari. <laughs> you notice it's got the horse, but the horse faces the other way. And, uh, so we're going back into the pass here, but that's this one. This has got a 65 kilowatt motor which is more powerful than the original car. Uh, that's a really on steroids that one. And uh, a bit more of a tangle of bits and pieces but really it's the same car scaled up. It's, uh, nothing, there's nothing really fundamentally different about it. You've got to have things like this fuse because um, when you blow a, an ordinary uh, car type fuse um, up to about 80 volts they just blow but over 80 volts they arc and you end up with a little mini arc welder working way under the bonnet which is not quite where you want it. So that's a T-class fuse and it's um, designed to, uh, to, to blow and stay blown. But, uh, so everything has to get a little bit more complicated. Um, that's an interesting little device invented locally. That one was built by um, uh, a guy named Bruce Tonkin, and that contains all the little relays that you saw under the bonnet of the uh, the Sherpa. Uh, they're all they're all electronically arranged in there, and that that uh, controls all the interlocks of the different systems. 